When you think about the Battle of Jutland, you almost certainly think about the battle cruisers. For better or worse, that's become the image of that battle. Ships blown into pieces by massive explosions. Or, on the German end, blasted to bits, but limping home intact. However, that ignores the many, many lighter ships present that day in 1916, one of which, HMS Caroline, remains as the only survivor of Jutland, and one of only a handful of ships from the Great War in general. That Caroline survives as a museum ship is impressive enough. Arguably more impressive is the fact she was in service for nearly a century. Granted, most of that time was spent dockside as a static headquarters and training ship. Nonetheless, this cruiser was technically in service from 1914 through to 2011, with only one notable break. That is, actually, why she's still around at all. But we'll get to that later. First, let's look at the rest of her story, which began on January 28th, 1914, when Caroline was laid down in Birkenhead. Even at this point of her story, this ship was a bit of a special one. Not in design, but in construction. Caroline would be launched on September 29th, 1914, nine months from her keel being laid. This was quite a fast pace of construction already. The fitting out would go even faster, with Caroline commissioned on December 4th of 1914, less than a year from keel laying to entering service. Of course, it's safe to say her fitting out was probably a bit rushed. While Caroline was being built, the Great War had broken out, and the Royal Navy would have been looking to get anything it could into the water, and from there into service. That doesn't take away from the success of her builders, but it is worth noting. In any case, let's look at what the Royal Navy got from Caroline's builders. Following British practice, Caroline was a C-class cruiser, an overarching classification for several different groups that differed in various details. As for Caroline, she was the nameship of the first group, the Caroline class, as it were. These were capable warships for their time, although quickly improved upon by the later C-class groups, most notably in terms of firepower. However, that's a topic for another video. So let's focus on Caroline for now. Caroline displaced around 3,700 tons at her normal loading. This could go as high as 4,700 tons at the full load, although that does differ between sources. For example, Friedman in British Cruisers cites 4,630 tons. Either way, that displacement allowed Caroline to carry a decent loadout for 1914 two single 6-inch guns in a super-firing pair on the stern, and then eight single 4-inch guns mounted around the ship, starting with one pair just ahead of the bridge, and then another pair on either side of the bridge itself, and then another pair on either side of the funnels, with the final pair here on either side of the aft superstructure. This interesting layout came about for one reason, because these were intended to be destroyer-hunter killers. For that, a large number of fast-firing guns were necessary. In addition to those weapons, Caroline also carried a single six-pounder anti-aircraft gun, and two twin torpedo tubes mounted above water, a respectable amount of weaponry for a 1914-like cruiser. Armor protection, for its part, was also pretty good for the time, a 3-inch belt at its thickest, backed by a 1-inch thick deck. Against destroyers, this would have been quite sufficient. It was even decent against most lighter cruisers. Provided you ignore the big armored cruisers, but Caroline was never intended to fight those. As for her speed, that was also pretty good, a maximum of around 28.5 knots, on 40,000 shaft horsepower. That doesn't seem like much by Second World War standards. However, for a 1914 cruiser, that was actually pretty high speed. Either way, that brings us to the end of the design detail. Now for the service history. 
As could be expected, this began quietly. True enough, the Great War was well underway by the time Caroline joined the fleet in December 1914. However, if you look at the list of naval battles and ships involved, you will quickly see Caroline is missing. That's because she spent most of her time on patrol in the North Sea. Battles like Dogger Bank or Heligoland Bight were closer to shore. And in the case of Heligoland Bight, before Caroline even entered service. Although apparently, she did come close to Dogger Bank. According to a recollection by one of her crew, Caroline helped escort Lion home after that battle. That aside, her patrol duty was important. Don't get me wrong there. It kept an eye out for blockade runners or for mine layers. However, it was also pretty uneventful for the most part. From 1915 through to Jutland, Caroline didn't get up to any real action. As for Jutland, well, that was more exciting. Caroline still isn't the most famous ship from that battle, but she was present and she did contribute, as part of the 4th Light Cruiser Squadron of the Grand Fleet. We have more information from the same crewman, Warrant Officer Frederick Fielder. Caroline was assigned to watch for the German ships. This kept her away from the initial action, where the battle cruisers clashed with each other. However, after that engagement began, Caroline changed course and rushed towards the battle arriving in time to support the battle cruisers, as it turned out. Specifically, Caroline took a position to protect Lion from torpedo attack. This would see her end up in a bit of a mess, sailing entirely too close to other ships, while shells were falling all around. Yet somehow, Caroline came out without so much as a scratch, even when she was close to Lion, while that ship was suffering hits. Fielder even notes as much. To quote, There are shells falling around us, at times being uncomfortably close, it being nothing short of marvelous that we were not struck. Apparently, the ship was so charmed that her crew took to treating the fight as a football or soccer to the Americans in the audience game, cheering on as they saw hits on German ships. That mood turned sour, when the crew saw Invincible blow apart and break in two. And not long after that, a pair of torpedoes came close to the ship, apparently at the end of their run, puttering about at six knots. Regardless, Caroline's good fortune continued to hold out, even when the Germans launched torpedo attacks and Caroline joined other cruisers in chasing the destroyers down. She may even have hit a submarine at one point, Although in the chaos of that battle, it's hard to say. There was a sighting of a periscope and a bump beneath the hull. The most exciting moment for Caroline, however, was definitely a close encounter with the High Seas Fleet. Fielder notes a battleship opening fire on Caroline and straddling the cruiser. Caroline put up a smokescreen and managed to pull away, at which point her contribution to Jutland came to an end. Exciting to be sure, although arguably quite lucky. The ship could have easily suffered severe damage at multiple points. And yet, Caroline came out without a scratch. After this, the rest of the Great War returned to mostly quiet duty. Patrols and other such things. Although the cruiser also picked up a flying off platform to carry a single Sopwith Camel. Although this was a bit inefficient as the ship had no means of recovering the aircraft, short of someone else bringing it back. That said, by 1918, the war was coming to an end. By November 11th, it was over, and Caroline would transition to her first stint of peacetime service, which took her to the East Indies Station in June of 1919. This was also fairly quiet, by all indications, although it saw Caroline sail up and down the Indian Ocean. She would remain there until returning home in 1922, at which point in February of 1922, the cruiser was put in reserve. This proved to be short-lived, with Caroline back in service by 1924. 
although I use the term service, very, very loosely. The cruiser was more dockside in Belfast, starting on April 1st of 1924. Stripped of her weaponry, Caroline would remain there for a very long time. This saw her operating as a headquarters and training ship, specifically for the Royal Navy Volunteer Reserve. She would still be there in 1939 when the Second World War broke out. Unlike other C-class cruisers, Caroline would not return to combat duty, not in her original layout and not as a converted anti-aircraft cruiser either. The ship, already serving as a stationary headquarters, continued on in that role. It just expanded a bit. Now, Caroline served as the Royal Navy's headquarters in Belfast. There she would be part of the command network for the Battle of the Atlantic. While Caroline didn't serve on the front line, she was still a critical part of that conflict. Even when the needs of the fleet outgrew Caroline, that remained true. Shore facilities sprung up, still ostensibly tied to the ship. Thousands of men would have served either on Caroline or in the facilities attached to her. This is an underappreciated role, to say the least, although Caroline performed it well. However, when the war ended in 1945, the ship returned to the Volunteer Reserve. She would remain in that role for the entire Cold War. This period included a refit at Harland and Wolf in 1951. However, from all I've read, Caroline never set sail ever again. She remained moored in Belfast, aside from that refit. At some point, the cruiser also picked up a deckhouse aft of her funnels. That is probably her most distinctive feature in the modern day. That said, there's not a lot to talk about for the Cold War. So let's look at how Caroline's story came to its end. By the early 2000s, the ship was still in service, still serving as a training establishment. This would continue until 2009, when the reserve finally moved ashore. Caroline was, at that point, left without a purpose. It should be little surprise she was decommissioned soon after, in 2011. Had she lasted a couple more years, it would have been a century after she initially entered service. Although there was that two-year gap, 1922 to 1924, breaking the pattern. In any case, Caroline was finally decommissioned for the final time. At that point, it became an open question what to do with the ship. Proposals were made to restore her to her Jutland configuration. However, that ran into two major issues, sourcing parts, including weaponry, and removing the deckhouse, which was arguably more important to her overall story. In the end, Caroline was left in more or less her final configuration. By June of 2016, she opened as a museum, still moored in Belfast. She even picked up some 4-inch guns to at least partially restore her to Jutland configuration. Moreover, Caroline still has her original turbines. Those were restored and preserved for display, making them a rather rare sight. A major refit saw the ship repainted and generally fixed up, at which point she returned to her mooring. Things would have probably been uneventful at that point. Until 2020, which saw the ship and museum closed for obvious reasons. The lack of funding caused issues with keeping the ship in place, although Caroline would ultimately reopen in 2023, with funding secured through 2038, apparently. As of this recording, she remains in Belfast, and if you have the ability and time to visit her, she's certainly worth the trip. A survivor, and a unique look at a class of ship that has long since vanished. Thank you for watching, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.